Welcome, everybody. Sorry for the late start. I went ahead and <clears throat> edited the live stream time, but uh, Junior is running late and Eric is on vacation. But joining us tonight, our guest is anybody know? Anyone want to know? Well, let's go ahead and bring him on in. Armando Basulto of Basulto Academy of Defense. Hello, Armando. How you doing, man? Thanks, thanks for having me today. Well, thanks for joining us, man. So tell us a little bit about what it is that you do, what you guys specialize in at uh, Basulto Academy, and what kind of Brazilian jiu-jitsu you guys teach and other defensive stuff you guys do. Sure. Um, it, it's interesting that you said uh, what type of Brazilian jiu-jitsu you do because so, that's actually sometimes a sticking point uh, in the community, in the jiu-jitsu, within the jiu-jitsu community. So um, uh, my name is Armando Basulto. Usually the, 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 the title, you know, how uh, in different martial arts would be sensei or sifu or something. In, in jiu-jitsu, the, the rank is called professor, which is a rank that you reach. Um, usually at black belt and after a certain time in black belt and having finished an instructor course, you're given these two bars on your black belt that um, it connotes the professor in the style. Hey, we got somebody joining us. <laughs> yeah, that's Junior showing up late. Don't mind him. <laughs> so, since Junior just joined us and anyone else just joining us live, uh, this is Armando with Ball Sutil Academy. Uh, since Junior now needs the introduction because, you know, we usually prep him before this, but here he is looking like he's a baked fucking lobster, dude. Why you, are you all red? Do you read that? I uh, know. You're it looking. Says, you got to turn your head the other way. It <laughs> says, I am the law, and it's a law. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But anyway, joining us tonight, we'll run this again. We'll try this again now. Is Armando Basulto of Basulto Academy. So he was going over uh, the different, uh, as he was saying, in different martial arts have different names for masters. You know, we've got Sensei, Shifu, things like that. So he was explaining the different levels of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu before we were so rudely interrupted by Junior. So, real quickly, what do I call you then in those titles, Brandon? Uh yeah, Not man. a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> uh, oh, man, Junior's getting it. Uh, well, you know, um, the reason um, I, I'm only addressing it is because when, when you when you posted about, hey, we're going to have a special guest tonight, and you said you didn't know what to call, and, and it's yeah, really yeah. not a big deal, especially in jujitsu circles. Nobody really. I mean, uh, because I've been coaching for so many years and I've coached boxing, I've coached wrestling. Um, a lot of the guys just call me coach. So it's not a, a big deal. But but just for uh, if you wanted to know the etiquette, it's it's uh, professors usually the title re reserved for somebody who's completed a, a teaching course and is a black belt. And uh, on, on the belt, on the black belt, you have these two little white bars on the top and the bottom. And that just means it's a professor. Um, and then a, a mestre, which is Portuguese for master, is somebody, it's a, it's a rank at the red and, and black belt. Uh, like my, my teacher, uh, Hoyler Gracie, is yeah. a mestre. And then the highest would be Grandmaster Elio Gracie, Grand Mestre, which is yeah. like the founders like Carlos Gracie or Elio Gracie or um, the, the founders of the system. But that, that's about it. And what, what people don't realize that in when uh, the Gracie family uh, was uh, developing jujitsu in Brazil and, and, and learning it and developing it, th there were no ranks like this. They all just wore white belts and the blue belt, which is the first belt of jujitsu, was considered like a black belt. And uh, there was a time there That's where, yeah, not a lot of distinction there. <laughs> no, no, that was it. That was it because it's you know it's skills based. You can do it or you can't. You know, um, and for a while there, Grandmaster Elliot was wearing the blue belt. He went back to wearing the blue belt as a way of making a statement. And and some instructors uh, today, um, you know, Hoist Gracie has uh, wears the blue belt, and some of his instructors wear the blue belt, kind of to to give a nod to that, um, to that uh, perspective. So anyway. I'm sorry. I just I wanted to address that because you because I, I didn't want you to. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I honestly <laughs> wanted to know because I had no clue. Because I know, you know, growing up, I did Muay Thai and and other forms of martial arts as a kid, and in the while I was in the army too, and 
certain i never got into rolling around because i broke my nose so many times it doesn't need to happen anymore so and now after you know that bradley hatch crushed it and the va quote unquote fixed it it's even worse but i can't bend my nose doesn't crush it's it doesn't bend either so that totally sucks right. <clears throat> but it was very some of them would take it very seriously some of them didn't care so i never know what and especially when you're talking to a broad audience like we have you never know <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get into so rather than offend anyone i was like you know we should probably just let him address that yeah. so, <laughs> but on top of the uh the gracie jiu-jitsu north carolina which is um we'll go ahead and bring that up and we'll bring it up multiple times where you guys can find uh so if you wanted to go to facebook right now and uh, go on to facebook.com junior's probably going to work on it because he's the master of the dual screen thing uh you can go to gracie facebook.com backslash gracie dash north dash carolina and uh check them out their website is of course www.gracienorthcarolina.com and you can find the sexy Armando Balsuto on Instagram at, at Armando underscore Balsuto. His wife is going to listen to this later and be like, you can't talk to Brandon anymore. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so nope. if you're live with us right now on Facebook or YouTube or you're watching this later or listening to it later, go ahead and go on over to the Facebook page, check it out, and check out what they do as we talk about it throughout the episode. But uh, back to uh, get get myself more on track than anything, outside of the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, what else defensively do you guys do? Because it is not, it's, you guys are Gracie, North Carolina, but you're also an academy of defense. And so you yeah. do teach multiple uh, ways of self-defense outside of the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Sure. So, so originally, um, I, my original academy was outside New York. Ah, uh, that's storming here where we live. So he may cut it in and out. <laughs> uh, I, Whatever. Well, you guys are breaking up a little bit. I'm losing the signal, but you guys haven't lost me, have you? No, you froze up a little bit uh, okay. right when you were like, yeah, it used to be. And then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, our original academy was outside New York City and it was Basulto Academy Defense or Team Bad in Basulto Academy Defense for, sh for sure. Yeah. And yeah, we, we always ran concurrent programs. Like we had jujitsu, we had boxing, we had savat box francaise, which is uh, French kickboxing. We had Muay Thai. Uh, then we had Kali, which is Filipino martial arts. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea was that if you came to this one place, it, it wasn't different classes like that you that you took and, and, and you picked one, but rather that you immersed yourself and trained in all these different disciplines Mm -hmm. primarily because our perspective our, our my perspective and and it's and it's really uh, a distillation of Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do, right? mm -hmm. Bruce Lee's a uh, uh, style of fighting and looking at fighting was that it's all ranges it's all about ranges so there's a great range where punching somebody in the face is a really good option <laughs> there's, 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 some ranges, the yeah, there's some ranges where you, you're trying to get your punches off and it's too close or too far so what a great time to kick the guy in the throat right right there's there's, there's also great ranges where it's so tight that you can clinch and now it can elbow and knee and headbutt you or if it gets too close I may decide to take it to the ground or sometimes the ground just happens where you yeah. know it, you, you there's an entanglement happens the next time you trip and you fall over the the end table you're on the ground you need to have that range master and you, you guys know as as gun guys there's a range and a time where you can make your draw stroke there's a range in a time where like you have no business coming anywhere near your waistline or where your gun is or things are going to go south really bad say, this say, way. say that a little louder for the people <laughs> in the back <laughs> That's exactly you. You hit the nail on the head and not just because this is stuff you teach, but there are times where going to gun is the wrong option right off the bat. Absolutely. And, and, and if that's your only option, you, you, you're in a world of hurt because there's, oh, yeah. a lot, 
scenarios where you you definitely that should not be like your only option. Uh, it's the, the people that feel like they, they they have a firearm. It's like you know we talked about it's like Thor's hammer, Majolner. You just pull it out, <laughs> slam it on the ground, and every all problems are solved. They act know. like it's a force field. Some people they, do. Exactly. They don't train. They don't train defense. You know. And right. I think you see that a lot in the gun community, too, where you have people want to separate everything into disciplines. I think the younger generation, uh, like probably myself and definitely juniors generation, they're getting much more well-rounded training because we're getting more well-rounded trainers who have more real-world experience, you know, downrange in multiple conflicts or have been teaching for 20, 30 years now. And instead of having blinders on have been like opening their eyes going hey actually you know if we take some of this and some of this and a little of that you know this will round you out this isn't going to make you it's like when we went to basic <clears throat> uh, we can't talk about your service obviously Armando, <laughs> but you know we're all military men all of us here are military men and so we know what it's like you show up and they teach you just enough and at first to get your ass whooped and that's about it you I, know from there it's up to you to follow up I remember right. my drill instructor saying all right we're doing combatives <laughs> all right next week you're going home on christmas vacation let's see how many of you come back with black eyes <laughs> <laughs> right, you know. it doesn't you know and that's that's the purpose of the training though you can't just you know get a class in it and then that's it. You're an expert and go on your merry way. Sure. And and, and there's no like <laughs> and there's no like secret technique. You know, like if I if I learn this or I do this one seminar, I'm good to go. Uh -huh. you know? Or I mean there's a whole cottage industry that like when they teach a seminar, we're gonna teach us one move and it's the answer to everything. It's like the the Swiss Army knife. <laughs> Defeating the snake and all right, that right. craziness. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got it covered. Going to business school while being a business owner and then hearing your teacher talk about business etiquette and then realize they've never owned a company ever. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I, I got to hop out of this class, man. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> sure, sure. Or, or you know, it's very common to uh, uh, a, a jiu-jitsu instructor or a boxing instructor or, or a kickboxing instructor that's never, not only not been in the ring, but has never really gotten really, really beat up. You know, I think uh, uh, any any fighter will tell you that they learn their biggest lessons from like their worst defeats. Oh, so yeah. I, I always felt like, man, I'm, I'm a master then because I've really taken some whoopings, you know, uh, <laughs> as we like to call it here in the South, carry that ass whooping. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you carried an ass whooping or two in your day. Exactly. You, you have a little more respect for let's see where this goes first. Let's see if we can't diffuse the situation to begin with. You know, there's, sure. and you know, when I first got out, I, I trained people a little bit cause I just didn't know what else to do with my skill set. you know? And <clears throat> I was like, well, hell, but the reality of it is what I was doing is, you know, war skill set. Sure. A, a defensive skill set is a whole nother thing. So I started getting back into training with other people instead of trying to teach one thing. I started going to more classes again because two, when I got out in 06, you know, yeah, we were at that point up to modern fighting technique. A lot has changed in that last 14 years, sure. a whole lot, a whole lot of, you know, gun techniques, a whole lot of martial techniques, a whole lot of different things have been developed that help more in the civilian defensive aspect of anything else than anything. Well, even um, with that, Brandon, because like I came in, let's see, I joined in September 12th of 2011. And just hearing my sergeants of rules of engagement, right? So let's oh, talk yeah. about the in its own way, it's a defensive tactic, right? You know, shoot, don't shoot. Hey, stop, sir. Hey, shoot around at his feet. You know, all these different things. And it's like, you don't realize when you're in, you're like, oh, this is bull crap. I can't. But when you get out, oh, yeah. you're being a CCW character, you're doing those same things. Sir, I need you to calm down. Sir, back up, back up. Sir. Yeah. You know, you don't think about that stuff. Yeah. And well, that's the great thing. 
Go and ahead. And that ROE uh, uh, also applies to like the, the, the what we call them law enforcement. When I trained law enforcement, at the force continuum, which is a, a term you got tossed around. Um, not every uh, fight needs to be resolved by a takedown and choking the guy or, or punching the guy or, or kicking the guy's knee out. Um, a lot of times uh, that is the, one of those is the answer. You know, so yeah. range range sometimes has to do with scenario, not just how far the guy is from you. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Yeah, because I think there's there's a lot of times that people could easily talk down a situation, but they don't. They may, you know, case in point, it was in the news the other day, the idiot in Walmart that got into it over a mask with someone and he immediately pulls his gun. Like, that's all you got, dude. Like, yeah, that's got. Your first, your first thing should have just been, well, it's America. If they don't want me in here, they'll kick me out. I mean, that's it. That, that should have been the end of the conversation. Go your merry way. They go theirs unless they keep it up. And then you go find a manager and be like, look, do you want me to leave? Or can you get them to stop harassing me? I mean, that's that you don't immediately. Oh, I don't have a mask. Fuck you. I'm going to put my gun in your face. Like, oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's all it's all he had. That's the only option he had. Exactly. You know, it's <laughs> funny. We, uh, we just discussed this this story recently um, in, in, in our training group because about I guess it was 98 or 99. I used to run uh, some of the earl earliest um, jujitsu or grappling tournaments, and it was called the Tri-State Ground Control Classic. It was uh, it, outside New York City, so we had New Jersey, Connecticut, and all these. It's a lot of states in that little cluster. Um, so I, I'm going over the rules meeting right before the tournament starts. And it, this was early before we were using just international Brazilian jiu-jitsu rules. So we were saying you could do a neck crank. You could do but you can't do this. You could do a leg lock, but you, know, you could do a heel hook, but only from this. You know, we had this own – we were still toying with the rule structure. Again, yeah. it's important you realize the difference between a competition – and like a real life encounter with yeah, yeah. parameters. It's an enclosed space with what two people and, you know, rules, but and anyway, ref and exactly. judges and, and the whole nine. Timed, it's timed. Yeah. Um, but during the ref, I mentioned that you couldn't do bicep slicers. Now bicep slicers are a position where you, you put your arm, you capture the guy's arm and you put your, your, your leg or your arm and you, and you, Put pressure so you're actually separating the elbow and the bicep um, yeah. position. So, so, <laughs> so it sounds horrible, right? So we said, look, that, it sounds you know, horrible, deep. Right? I like how he's just like it sounds horrible, right? <laughs> but we say, we say, look, we don't want bicep slicers or calf slicers. You'd also do it to the leg and do that to the knee. So, so those two techniques are. And a guy goes, whoa, 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 whoa. A guy, one of the fighters, one of the competitors, raises his hand and goes, what? What do you mean? I can't do a bicep slicer? He goes, no, no, you can do a, a arm bars, but we don't want to. He goes, oh, and he, he, he had like wrestling headgear on. He was going to compete with like wrestling. He takes it <laughs> up and throws it on the ground and goes, ah, oh, and he marches <laughs> off, off the mat. And like one of the other coaches looks and goes, bro, that's all he had. That's all he had. He's not he had. Let him do it. <laughs> so it's like that's the same thing with this guy and the gun. At, at yeah. Walmart, that's all he's got. So if the guy pushes him and goes, "Come on," that's all he's gonna do. He goes for his draw stroke. He has nothing. Yeah. Even though the guy's like right this close. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that's that's just a bad recipe for bad bad choices. Bad choices. It, 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 very very bad choices that carry some hefty jail time usually. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> stuff like here in North Carolina, brandishing is a felony, straight up. You know, you're looking at three to five years. And so it's like, it's not something to play around with so just, at all. No. Um, so so what, what I was explaining was, so in the original Academy, we had all these disciplines and, and the goal was to encourage people. And we created like a, um, the type of membership structure to where hopefully everybody would train everything. So rather than have, you know, specialists, we had guys and women who could do a little bit of everything. And, and as evidence of that, one in the span of one month, and this is this is a, a true uh, metric. We had several guys compete one weekend in a Muay Thai Muay Thai matches. The following weekend, they did a Jiu Jitsu tournament. Same guys, and then the following weekend, we were invited to a, a Filipino martial arts tournament where it was stick fighting and knife fighting. You know, like with, with uh, 
not real blades. Well, well, yeah, Bl- yeah blended you know, blade, training blades. So, so, so it happened. They got there. close too in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and so the, these same guys were would would have enough of the skill set and understanding of the fight that they could more compete in each level. Exactly. But what happens is you only have not, that's not for everybody. That's yeah. not for everybody. You're going to have a group, and which I did, of about a half a dozen to maybe at times ten guys, and gals. My wife being one of them, by the way, um, who could do all of these things and appreciate it and love doing each one of them and love putting on the gloves and moving around and then love that class right after, take off the gloves, put on the gi, and now we're doing jujitsu. And they didn't see like these false separations. They no. when they're doing jujitsu, they're doing jujitsu. But when they put on the glove, they know that they're looking for the jab, the cross, and the right distance. Yeah. Um, and and they would, but not everybody can do that. So I ended up having like, you know, good big jujitsu classes, but those guys were never going to put on gloves. Then I had the people <laughs> came in for the boxing, but they they not interested at all in rolling around with sweaty guys. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and that's, I mean, then that's, that's, all, that's all Junior wants to do: <laughs> is roll around with sweaty guys. Check, check that's his why web. he stays in California. Hey, check, <laughs> check his web history. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, and then, of course, there's a class where all of a sudden people are grabbing sticks and like you know hitting with sticks, and we're like, "What is this crazy stuff?" So um, it, it 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 works great, but I, I really feel that jujitsu, Gracie jujitsu. The, the, the jiu-jitsu developed by the Gracie family in Brazil and then bought to the United States and showcased by the Gracie family in, in the UFCs, right? The oh, UFCs. Yeah. Horian Gracie, I, I remember I was there in those days. Horian created that to showcase jiu-jitsu to the world, okay? To, to say, look, look at jiu-jitsu. This is what it looks like. And, you know, put a karate guy and a boxer and whatever. Oh, watch yeah. each one in this format. As soon as I take you down, you're a fish out of water. Um, Jiu Jitsu uh, is uh, as it grew and people started to train it. Think about the first people that came to Jiu Jitsu were people from other martial arts. They were guys oh, who were yeah. training karate. They were they were like um, at the time we I was working with uh, with uh, a group that was training military uh, on the West Coast in San Diego, and it was Paul Vunak, a guy with uh, Progressive Fighting Systems, and he's the guy actually who first bought Hickson and, and basically introduced him to Hickson Gracie. It yeah. was really technically my, my first teacher. And um, when when Hickson would grab these guys, I mean, these all these guys are pipe hitters. These strong dudes. You know, oh, like, yeah. Like, Flinging them around the ground, like a ragdoll. And Hickson's just <laughs> chilling, like, and breathing. All of a sudden, he's grabbing the guy, choking him out. I have, I have old VHS tapes of, of, of this stuff. Um, and just kind of nullifying all the other cool stuff, like the punches and the elbows and, like, you know, the pushes and just just – Turning it all off, like taking a candle and just turning yeah. it off. Um, people, all these people started to gravitate to it, but they were also already karate guys and they were, you know, kickboxers. So they go, well, this is, I do this, I'm a kickboxer, but this is what I do for my ground game. Yeah. So as jujitsu was sort of um, uh, interjected into like the martial arts community or combatives community, it was seen as like a ground game. But if you train jujitsu, Gracie jujitsu, it's a full martial art. I mean, oh, there's yeah. actually, there's Striking. There's 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 striking. There's elbows. There's oh, weapons. I've, I've I've seen the Gracie boys videos. I said, yeah. oh yeah, there's yeah. definitely striking. <laughs> yeah, and and then um, there's weapons defenses that are a part of the curriculum that are like you know based on the oh if it's it, it's not new they didn't the Gracie family didn't create it but they definitely refined it. A lot of people get all bent out of shape. They go, well, they're just doing the jujitsu that you know Mitsu Maeda bought from Japan. And they're just claiming it as their own. It, 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 it's such short, very myopic view of jujitsu of what the Gracies actually did. Because Grandmaster Elio and the family really did do these these intricate observations and, and modificate details that make it real. They make it useful that it really works. It's in not a just real, for a show. In a them. real world situation. E- exactly. They, they brought it. I, I got it. They brought it to the people. Yes. That's what they really did. Is they right. because I mean Brazil, for those of you who have never traveled the world, Brazil Brazil is not 
the paradise that people think it is at the resorts. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Brazil is a down and dirty place, man. It's a hard life. It's a hard place to live. And while the Gracies have great success now, it's not like they were martial arts royalty or anything like that. They, they built this system from the ground up. They sat there and did their work, did their no time. No pun intended, right? No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, right every bit i'm gonna get called out for that later <laughs> anyway <laughs> so <clears throat> and uh you know in modern modern army combatives i know for a fact are based completely off of a lot of the gracie's teachings because when i joined in 2000 is when they really started teaching it to us and really going heavy it went outside your uh, bayonet knife training and all that because you know the reality of it is you're not going to take an m9 yeah and then last ditch effort you probably will right. but you it's really hard to knife fight with a big heavy ass bayonet <laughs> it's not exactly you know we went from the m7 which was sleek stiletto like actually fairly well balanced to this giant do everything bayonet that was a saw and you could cut barbed wire with it. You did, I'm like, why? When are we cutting barbed wire? We have Bradleys and Humvees. We're not, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> not to mention the fact, uh, hi, this is an M4. Ever heard of it? We'll just right. shoot through the shit <laughs> no right. Right. for any of that. <clears throat> um, so which brings me, on why am I talking about blades? Well, let's talk about defensive blades for a minute. All right. So we've covered our, our jujitsu or martial arts part that uh, Gracie, North Carolina teaches. Uh, now here we're going to get into a little bit of the blade stuff that Armando and uh, his uh, teachers and students get into. So uh, we, did you have a question there? Yeah. <laughs> Real, quick. Real quick here. And Brandon's going to hate me for this. Oh, good. And right when Armando said, that's all he got, do you think that's all your customer had yesterday? That's all he had to you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, uh, that guy. Uh, yeah. I was telling Armando about that off camera. We won't We won't talk about that during... Oh, he that should be made show. famous. <laughs> oh, nah. not, not yet. Not yet. He'll have his uh, surprise visit that he'll get. Oh. But anyhow, uh, so <laughs> defensive blades, picking one. All right. Obviously important. There's a lot of different brands out there. And just like anything in anything in the world, you got Xbox, you got PlayStation, you got Glock, you got XD. You got it. There are fanboys for everything. So this is really why I wanted Armando to come on outside of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu part is he does a lot of knife stuff. He's he's a knife guy through and through, like head to toe. This dude is a blade guy. He writes for a lot of blade magazines. Um, and so he's got a lot of really in-depth stuff that I listen to when it comes to blade, you know, because one, he did, it's always funny because he'll show up in the shop in his Glock flu Glock flu T-shirt, <laughs> and we're like, "Dude, what the hell, man?" He's like, "I'm just getting too old sometimes." <laughs> but the reality of it is, like him, his wife, his sons, I know them all well. I would not tussle with these people if they got a blade in their hand because you're not going to come away very well, if at all. <laughs> and, so, and and that's the defensive part. But there's also a lot of beauty to like the Sayoc and stuff, like the Katas and things that you guys do. Uh, so now that I'm half lit, go ahead and tell us about that. That's why I'm rambling, by the way. My Jameson is kicked in full force by now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, thanks for uh, yeah. We we uh, I mean, I've always I've always felt that weapons have to be integrated into your 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 combative perspective, you know. So and. For some people, it's the pistol, but it's sometimes, like we talked about, the pistol is not always the the only option, and it's not the best option. So blades, blades in in the martial arts have sometimes been disparaged as a defensive um, tool, and I think maybe uh, correctly so because uh, if you've watched enough uh, CCTV stuff and seen like incidents and done some AAR of like knife uh, uh, incidents. You can see that people can get stabbed like twenty times. You can oh, be stabbing yeah. the guy, and, and the guy will still kill you. 
with with his bare hands while you're you're cutting the guy. The guy may die later, but that's not yeah. help you at the moment. Um, and this is and this is where like the Filipino martial arts and the Filipino perspective is so different than let's say I'm, again not not devaluing other martial arts, but whereas if I, I've studied uh, Japanese swordsmanship and Chinese swordsmanship and I and I love it all, um, it, it's a very highly focused and disciplined art, but in the Philippines, because even in recent history, they've had, you know, guerrilla warfare as literally part, like, meshed. Oh, in it's, oh yeah. It's, it's so, part of their DNA at this point. Exactly. They, mm -hmm. the idea that you can have your gun, you can have your rifle, you can have your pistol, you can have your blade, you can have your big bolo machete and use them all and switch between them all in the middle of a fight. That's just like, you know, of course, that's logical like that. You don't have to like defend that or explain that. So they, they they have a very sophisticated way of applying the blade, training training the blade and then applying the blade. Um, I came across, I've been doing the uh, Sayak Kali about five years. Um, I've been doing uh, Filipino martial arts for many years, but specific, specifically focusing on Sayak Kali because I, I, uh, I discovered it in, um, in a, a uh, demonstration that they did at a Guru Dan and Santo seminar. Dan and Santo was like Bruce Lee's right-hand man. Um, mm -hmm. at, at, at one of his seminars, he actually bought them out. Um, this was in, in Queens, New York, and a fellow named Guru Nick Sakulas, Sakulas of, of uh, Queens, was hosting the seminar. And these guys came out, and it and the stuff they did with the blade was just like you know stuff we hadn't seen before. And when Dan and Santo said, you know, I've I've seen a lot of blade stuff, and this is probably the mo most evolved blade system, most sophisticated blade system I've seen. I said, like, that's a great endorsement. So it took me a while before I could really immerse myself in it and, and understand it. But it's, it's it, like you said, it has a lot of aspects to it that you really have to be training with some. You're not, not going to get this stuff off a DVD or out of just a seminar, even though they do they do do some open seminars. But the blade, when you're going to use it as, as a combative tool, you have to know what you're doing and you have to know how to train it just as another weapon, the pistol. You go down to the range and you practice your accuracy, you practice your fundamentals, okay? But how much can you practice, like, actually force on force? You know, there's lots of different ways yeah. to practice force on force, right? Um, we did this when we trained with the uh, Suarez force on force stuff um, and other folks, who, whether it's munitions or whatever you're training with. Yeah. But there's like a, there's almost like a diminishing return with that stuff because after a while, it becomes so much of a game. That people are that taking it, a it, shot it, to shoot the other. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and you become complacent, and that's no longer training because you've gotten a little bit bored, and now you're just dicking off. You're not really getting anything because, and I and I believe me, it, it, dude, I've been to those classes too, and it, it, three four days. There's just some times where in the middle of it, you got to just cut loose a little bit. Right. But I, I, I do I agree with you on that because there's especially like if you're not using full simunitions, if you're using like airsoft or something like that or or say one of those Tipman uh, paintball gun handguns that they make something yeah. like that, you know, it, then it's just, you know, because we did that one uh, out at uh, Eric's house with JB as far as the uh, yep. medical class. And that's what it turned out, you know, you know, we went from, you know, engage the person coming at you, running at you, what they're getting ready to do, things like that, you know, how to diffuse the situation and then engage and then how to apply first aid to yourself or them until help arrives. And uh, it just turned into how fast can we shoot Brandon? That's like, it was like, it was like I got singled out and handed the, the play knife. And I'm like, dude, what the shit, man? This is getting old. But, and it, but it was funny. But, you know, that was, that was just a one-day, eight-hour class. But it was also the middle of the class. And by then, it's like, oh, let's cut loose a little bit. Right. And, and so what happens, it, it, people start to game the game, you know, they game yes. the drill. And then it's just, it, it's like anything else. It, the, the law of diminishing returns of its applicability in reality. Yeah. But um, so Go when ahead. you're using the blade, it has to be with precision, just like you would practice with your pistol. And you wouldn't just practice with your pistol, like shooting like they do in the movies. Um, <laughs> there has to be precision and, and practice. You mean I'm not John Wick? Wait a minute. Right. Exactly. <laughs> hey, hold on. I bought a gun and I'm not John Wick. What do you mean? 
because you buy it, it's just superpowers, right? All right. <laughs> so if, if you got a blade, you have to be really precise. You have to have targeting, you know, or, or, or a colleague calls vital templates. If, if, you, if you're using the blade, you're going to be not wasting time, just not, you're not being, being a butcher. Showy. You're going exactly. in and doing the job. Exactly. You, you're not trying to butcher, you're trying to surgeon. Yes. Right? It's, it's, it's You're different. trying to stop the threat as quickly and efficiently as possible. There's a, and I'm, I'm trying to remember his name, is a Filipino um, uh, soldier, American uh, soldier during the Vietnam War. And I, I know his name, I bring it up all the time, and now I can't. It's because you're on the spot. Pugilistic, <laughs> yeah, it's taking, so, um, may, maybe Junior can find it. Um, the, <laughs> th this guy uh, had more confirmed kills with the blade of anybody else and one time he was watching some people training when he back in the states when he got back to Connors and he's watching people train with the knife and he's, he's saying all the stuff they're doing he goes hey just put the steel in him just put the steel in him you know that's, that's what you gotta do just put the steel, put in, the him. steel in him that's all yeah. you gotta do exactly so <laughs> get in there and get to work <laughs> exactly so with the blade, you got to you got to be precise. So there's templates of where do I put where where in the blade? And you got to be real precise, not just in the neck, but I'll say the internal carotid or the external carotid. Not not just I'm gonna stab him in the neck. Now I'm gonna stab him in the abdomen. No, I'm gonna maybe go for the abdominal aorta. I'm gonna push in all the way. Like you have to have yeah. Everything has to have a, a plan. You have to ha have a plan. As soon as the blade comes He's out. He's loving how you're talking about being inside men. Look at his little face. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and that's just it. I think um, there's not enough of that taught because I think people are afraid to almost teach it or learn it. Because and I, I, the teaching part of it, I get it depends on the state you live in and everything else. But at the same time, self-defense is God-given right. That's also one of your constitutional rights. No one should ever be afraid to defend themselves. That doesn't mean run out and become Jack the Ripper or something. You know, like right. this is all for personal defensive use. And sometimes you can't pull your weapon. Sometimes you can't box your way out of a situation. And you may only be able to get to your knife. And sure. you're in close, and you've got to know how to use it. And like Armando has said, it's about precision. It's about being precise. Yeah, you can chop a guy up all day, but like he said at the beginning of the conversation, look back at, you know, you can be sitting there slicing the dice and all day long. Well, they've killed you. Yeah, they'll die later, but they've choked you out. It's too late. You're dead. Yeah. Well, you know, that's absolutely no good when all you really needed was to get up in the sternum, around the heart, carotid, femoral artery, whatever you can get at. Sure. And, and then you have to have the right blade to do that. Yes. So as, as you were, um, if, if, if that's what the blade's going to be for, you, you're mentioning the different bayonets. You know, the people try to make a knife that's going to be a everything knife. And you can't a knife that's gonna be an e tool and also have the sobs and and also be able to, <laughs> you know, how much precision are you gonna get out of a blade like that? So exactly, you want, exactly. You want your blade made by maybe a bladesmith that is gonna use it and know how to use it and know what its intent intentions are. So, for example, a a a Sayak blade, like a drop point Sayak blade. This is one of their uh, production blades. I don't know if the camera can see it good. Uh, oh, they come yeah, with diff yeah. different uh, levels of um, uh, angulation uh, on the drop point. That that you can be very very precise with with whatever job you're wanting to do, and and can, you can switch grips on it comfortably and and be able to do what needs to be needs to be done. And it's not so big that you know you, you can't carry it. Um, exactly on your on your other strong side wherever you carry your pistol right so we ever go talking together he's not having a knife <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you are way too good with that sir <laughs> <laughs> he is um, man he's he, he, I'm telling you I've I've watched some of Armando's videos with him and his his colleague guys and his side guys and I'm just like dude that it's 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 amazing to watch it first of all. So here's one of my biggest questions on knives. What is the proper way of holding a knife? Uh the answer is in your hand. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's that's always <laughs> yeah, no, no I, I i was i wasn't actually being facetious because that that question does come up and it's not wrong yeah it's going to depend on you know sometimes it's what draw stroke you were, you had accessible to you right when you drew it like how, you, you can you can how did you pull the knife exactly so that's dictated by how you carry it right are, are you always planning on and integrating it with your pistol so you, you know you're going to be drawing with your left hand if you're if your uh, strong hand is your right hand or is if it's it might be your primary there might be a situation where it is your primary so are you going to be because drawing with your it primary? is yeah it, it may be that's the only thing you can carry into a non-permissive environment you sure. can't you know just go ahead and yeah, I think he just cut me through the internet. I mean, that is for real, dude. I, you guys, I'm telling you, go to Gracie, North Carolina. I'm going to bring it back up again. All right. Go right now to the facebook.com Gracie, North Carolina. And if you're just joining us, if you've been here with us, obnoxious, just joined us, uh, go check out their Facebook page. Uh, go check out some of the videos they've got on there that shows them doing some of this training. And it's it's amazing stuff because it's not just the beauty of it. Because all martial arts do have beauty. Even, even gun, I've seen them. I'm not quite sure how I feel about them because they're completely made up, I'm sure. But like the whole gun kata thing some of these people do. Yeah, it's kind of goofy at first. But if you actually watch the movements, yeah, I can see where they're trying to make up their own little martial art with guns and whatnot <clears throat> and there is some training value to some of it i will acquiesce to that but <clears throat> with the martial arts like silo i can't say it right say it again i always mess this up and i i'm like armando's just gonna reach out and smack me one of these days when he's at the shop like say it right what is wrong with you <laughs> it's a, it's a Sayak, kali. Sayak kali. all right so just this it's not just stick fighting, you know, it's, that's part of it, but it's also the knife part. Uh, but it, the sticks are more of a, I get, would they be like a placeholder or a trainer? I mean, or are they, am I talking about two totally different things at this it, point it, now? It, it can be. Sometimes in some Filipino martial arts, a stick is like, uh, uh, can also be used to, 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 to be a stand-in for, for a sword. For a bladed weapon, um, in, in the Sayak Kali system, um, if you're using a stick, it's an impact weapon. You know, it, it, so you're training an impact weapon. But if you have a blade in your hand, you're training a blade. So um, I, I, I will add also, I don't have the trainer, but like this, uh, this Sayak Drop Point also comes with the blue trainers. They were like some of the first people to make an exact replica of the blade in this blue colored so it stands out so when you see the blue, so you know you're not accidentally grabbing your trainer and walking exactly, out the door exactly so anybody who's making a, a fighting blade and claims to be making a fighting blade should include as that package as a training package a trainer that either fits in the sheath that you're using to train with or, or has it its own. exactly or has its own sheath a great blade now that we're talking this is a smaller carry um this this is brand new from <laughs> he might want to back up, Junior. He might cut you through the internet too. <laughs> uh, this this is from Amtac Blades. Uh, Bill Rapier, who's uh, one of the top guys, and if you want to talk about integrating pistol with the blade, this is probably the, the cutting edge guy. He, he was with Dev Group for a, a while. I did an article on his Northman blade. This is his new one. It's called the Magnus. So it just dropped like last month. Um, the the, the uh, Northman is a smaller version of that, but you can see the the sheath system. I could go on about the sheath system because it has like uh, hidden pockets and so forth. But since we're only talking about blades for right now, you can see that that knife is not made for uh, cutting. No, you know, no, making no. It sushi is. Or, or yeah, it, it, it can. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> small. My cake with that. <laughs> hey, my birthday is next Sunday. I might be gonna you know, have Armando just come over the mountain and cut my cake for me with that thing. Be like, come on, I got something we can cut with it. Not now, me. I'll, Not me. I'll tell you the, <laughs> it's the Northman, the smaller version of this, which I actually don't have with me because it's on my my hunting pack. I take with me in the woods, and because it's smaller, it even has a serrated edge. I use it for everything. I've used it for yeah. everything, and I also do trapping. Uh, I love woodsman stuff. I've used it to help me dig my my, my dirt holes and and everything. Th this one here doesn't have the serrated edge. This is basically as as like I said, put, put the steel in. Yeah. Um, so, and, <laughs> and this the, comes with a trainer. Like but look, third rib look and twist. Look at the grip. Look at that grip. 
So it, that's meant for holding and giving you different grips so that you could you could use this as, as an assist, as a power assist. As a power right assist. Right oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Can you imagine getting drilled right in the head with that thing? Are you, are you ready to get sued for, right first now? First grip just popped right between the eyes. You not, uh, it wouldn't be pretty. <laughs> are, are you ready? It will kill. <laughs> it will kill. It will kill. <laughs> Dog will hunt. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, that's, that's, that's a Primus line, isn't it? It is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. So from Blades, we'll still be in the Blades for a second. Let's talk about EDC Blades. And this doesn't necessarily mean self-defense Blades. Like I was talking to Armando earlier, I carry probably four or five different Blades on me because each one, one is one or two or for for sticking you if I have to, but most of them are for different types of work and yeah. what I do around the shop. <clears throat> I got well, old faithful from deployment. Yeah. The old uh, Rex Fairbairn. No, it's that Gerber, the flip up one that they would give yeah, you. Yeah, the covert oh, yeah. one. Yeah. Rex Fairbairn. Yeah. I, I don't still know got mine. I don't know if it's because it went through deployment on me, but I mean, just the girth of it, I was like, this is going to be a good pair of brass knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, and that's the thing too, because you had two people. It was a uh, Fairbairn and uh, uh, mine's. Say again, Fairbairn Sykes. Sykes, Fairbairn Sykes, the guys who yeah. created the blade. Yes, 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 yes. So it was a con it was a conglomeration of the two, a, a get together, a collaboration. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, I had the covert folder. I still have it. it that poor thing, dude. I abused the absolute shit out of that thing. And it took every bit of it. It took every bit of it. I sat there. I've got to find it because, hi, baby. We're being joined by toots. <laughs> hey, I know. It's raining. Come here. You want to come say hi? <laughs> All right. So uh, I still have that blade. Uh, it's just chewed all the bits from my early army day. Well, my middle and latter army days opening beers and all sorts of stuff. But, but here's the thing. It's so well built that there's no flop to the folder. It doesn't, cause a lot of folders you'll run across after a lot of use and abuse. Yes. They, they do that shaky bit and you're like, well, that's useless. Um, faithful. <laughs> yep. Things a master. Now these days I carry, of course, my TDI. <clears throat> and that's my reaction side carry. Uh, like Armando was talking about, you know, I have, you know, my strong side is my right side. So I, my draw hand for my pistol is my right hand, but I'm going to have a blade on my reaction side just because I may not be able to get my gun. Or what if he stuffs your draw? What are you going to do then? Yep. And, you know, that that's where the blade is, is always available is when your, when your draw stroke gets fouled. What do you do then? Yes. And this, and this is where, like, for example, jujitsu is an important skill because it's not just about grappling on the ground. It's also about understanding the grapple, which itself, starts and how, standing up. Yeah, you know the yeah. old the old uh, cited statistics that like ninety percent of fights end up on the ground, right? But a hundred percent of them start standing up unless you started fighting. You were both sun tanning and then started arguing or something, right? Yeah. So, so you you need to understand like leverage and 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 so forth. And you're not drawing. You, you can't draw your pistol, and you won't be able to draw your knife either if you don't understand that that uh, that aspect of it. But um, but you were asking about uh, how many like th those blades that both you guys mentioned. You're super comfortable with those. Like when you need to like if, if mail comes in in a box, you need to open. You just automatically yeah. reach for it, flip it, yep. cut it. That becomes like you're getting so many reps on that 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 becomes your blade. You know, that's a that's the blade that. You don't have to think about where is it because you probably yeah. got it in the same spot all the time. So that's a that's a great. I was a big believer. I've always been a big believer in that. Yep, I always my have. My got my Asheville Steel right there, right down the road from me now. Yeah, my Paragon. But that's my out the front that I always have in my right pocket. So yeah. yeah, I use it to cut open the mail, but they make their stuff out of S30V, and yep. this thing, while it's hard to sharpen, one. Once this thing gets its edge, it's almost impossible to get it off. And sure. while I, I've done it a few times because I use this to open every single thing in existence. But I also know if I have to, it's right here. It's a <laughs> racks. There you go. Hey, there's nothing wrong with a carry axe. It sits right <laughs> next to my desk, just so. You I know. mean, if you look back there, what do you see on the? 
there's the tomahawk right there. <laughs> yep. I <would> say, yep. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> tomahawk, it's kind of, a little harder to make it EDC, but I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what we need to come up with, a folding tomahawk. Oh, somebody's doing it. No, <laughs> oh, I guarantee they are. Well, I remember a <laughs> SHOT Show... Right now, every net, net nanny in the world's losing their mind because I just took my out front knife on it like this on my chin. But uh, it's locked in case anyone anyway, can't open it. So uh, it was, I think it was 2018. No, 2016. Clax. Uh, the Clax. It was this axe head. Yes. You know what I'm talking about. It connected. Yeah, yeah. You could stick it to something or yeah. it had a. Uh, Handle you could buy for the oh that thing was super awesome and I never got around to buying one and I don't even know if the company exists anymore. I, I think that they were, they were coming in uh they were coming in the battle box I think for a while. If I'm yeah, correct, yeah, yeah. They did. That's that's uh, but I saw them at Shot Show. Yep, that's that's okay. <laughs> so uh, that that blade might be your your go to blade, but you know, so you got you got to think about environments too. Like if you pull out that up, out the front blade at the post office to open your box, you might turn some heads. Oh yeah, open, yeah. Right? It would opening, not be it would not be good. <laughs> exactly. But it, if you're opening a little case knife, that like nobody cares, and and also depends on on the the environment. Like this is a pretty permissive environment where we live. Um, everybody, even kids, have. A blade on a sheep on their belt. Oh yeah, you know, it's just not a big deal. But if you did that in New York City, oh, if you had they'd be belt, up on a dam. Yeah, they'd be arrested. Absolutely. They'd be in jail. Oh, more than enough stories of guys that I know that are getting on the subway with their their all their tools and they're holding like their their level and but they have a knife in their pocket, you know, like visible. Oh yeah. Pocket. And the cops pull them over at the next stop, get them out, cite them, or arrest them. You know, I mean, it's it's crazy. It's just different environments. You got to know if you're an NPE in an permissive environment or, or what you're mm -hmm. in. Um, but it's good to have that your go-to blade, and it not be your main combat blade, so that you don't. Oh no! You so froze up, Armando. There you go. I'm back now. So you don't. You want to have a, a different blade. Go ahead this. and keep talking. I'm gonna let. I gotta go deal with this. <laughs> you you'll stay with me, Junior. Yeah, I'll be here. <laughs> so, uh, what I was saying is that you don't want to pull, um, you know, something like Magnus in at the post office to open a box, but maybe yeah, you have, yeah. you know, a smaller folder that you keep in your pocket, like a, literally what, what's called a pocket knife, which is you literally keep it in your pocket, jingling around with your uh, with your change or whatever. Um, well, I, I, so Brandon's seen my like uh, my backpack. Right, I have my first aid kit in it. It has everything. Right, it has spare mags, but I put everything else in there. And one of my go-to knives is the Pentagon from Saga. I just keep it in there. Mm, yep. It's just it's not a bad knife. It's not a good knife, but it's there just when you need it. When you need it, yeah. You need a sharp edge. So yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. We were uh, we were just discussing how you, maybe you don't want to be the blade that you pull out instinctually all the time. Be your main combative blade if you're carrying a defensive blade because exactly when you want to come out, you know. So um, you know, two is one and one is none, right? Exactly. Yeah, because I mean, my my go-to is my TDI. You know, that's my reaction side. That's my draw knife with my weapon. Um, the whole nine yards, but I've also got a little cold yeah, steel old. stabby stick, you know. These things are like 10, 15 bucks shipped from them, I think. But that's just in my pocket because, you know, if it comes down to you needing the push blade, oh yeah, let me get my wallet. Just hold on. Right. They're, they're, because they're, that's not going to be as obvious as drawing my pistol when I come out with a push blade and stick it in their throat they're not going to be real happy but they're not going to expect it either if i'm going yeah hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on you know they're going to start to realize when you because they're no matter how much you train no matter how fast you are someone's got a gun or a knife stuck to your person <laughs> you're not no. going to outrun them you're just not no. <laughs> it's physically impossible well, so you have to rely on messing up their OODA loop and going to something other than your one trick pony. Right. 
and and you know there's times we we use the term it's just it's not your turn you missed your turn you know, yeah the guys everybody has the gun on you and there's like you you you, you know the cowboys just say oh you you've got the drop on me you know <laughs> it's just not your turn it's done. It's done. <laughs> you gotta either go ahead and just hand over your wallet and let it be because that stuff's replaceable or if it's a situation you know you're not going to get out of wait your turn that's right your turn's going to come up it always sure. does <clears throat> all right so we we landed there we got about five minutes left all right so here's what we're going to do at that time we're going to do a little update on some things number one being project super beast Get out. All right, so we now have our, hold on, let me take my dang gum sling off. It's getting caught in my microphone wire. All right, so we've got the beginnings of Project Super Beast. All right, so we've got our KS-47 Gen 2 lower, our pistol, our, foot, our uh, upper. I finally got all my parts in. Thank you to uh, my friend at Magpul. I don't want to get him in trouble, so I won't say his name, but he went ahead and got me some uh, Magpul Pro Sites, uh, and I was super excited about that because I was like, sweet, because no one has them in the world. So, <laughs> got those, and we've got our Troy Claymore on there, and I know some idiot's going to go, let's do it clock right. I hate trying to find the camera on here. So, we got our front towards enemy. That way we know. But... The real reason for the Troy Claymore is because this thing sounds like a howitzer going off, and it's only an eight and a half inch barrel, so <laughs> that's only about a foot from your face. <clears throat> but uh, waiting on the next thing will be the Adams Arms Piston Kit, but that's going to be they're back ordered eight to twelve weeks, so everything is. Oh, yeah. See, so for those of you who don't know, I probably didn't mention this earlier. Armando is not only local to us, but he's... Oh, yeah. See, I need that. So this this we call Generation 1. This we call Generation 2. <laughs> Bigger see. window, lighter, and VG capable now. So where's ours? PG, yeah. <laughs> look, at, look at the clarity of the glass now. Yeah. So where's mine? That is. Uh, side so which by one side, is that? You can really see it. Oh yeah, it makes a huge difference. Now that's the which one is that again? That's the this US. is our UH one. So this was Gen one. Um, great optic. Absolutely loved it. Had a rechargeable battery port on it right here. It, just a whole bunch of cool features. We found out not a lot of customers were running them. Um, so we started stripping late. Um, I believe we're an ounce lighter than we originally were bigger window, no rechargeable port, but the coolest thing about this is look at the clarity of that glass in that bigger window. I mean, Oh yeah. I, be it's I believe it's the biggest window on the market now for holographic sites. And is this, is this being made at the new plant here? I do not have that answer, actually. Um, <laughs> I really don't. Uh, oh, I know. I just like giving you shit. <laughs> but here's something really cool. Um, and this is throwing this disclaimer now. This is coming from NAG Industries. This is not coming from the optics manufacturer at all. Disclaimer, disclaimer, you know, no loss. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't understand. There was a whole bunch of bad rap when EOTech went through their thing, and it sucked. It was on fortunate circumstance but eotech's reticle would move inside right you're moving oh, the yeah. your windage and elevation what vortex was smart enough to do with the gen one was we solid mounted the reticle then we made you see this natural line that comes here from the base where the mounting is yeah uh, you can see it better on the gen two because there's a little gap right there you see that little hole yep. yeah yeah so you're actually moving the whole optic for your windage and elevation. So it helps with a lot of the thermal drift issue. It's very possible to still have thermal drift issues. I mean, because that happens. You go from hot to cold. That's, mm. that's our whole thermal oh, drift yeah. thing, right? You can never completely take that away. Again, it was well, just... Especially bad. with the holographic side, it's just... it's. 
physics are physics, man. There, there's only so much you can do. In my opinion, no optics companies ever did anything wrong or anything. It was just a bad circumstance how things happen. But, you know, Vortex looked at that situation and said, let's make this better. And they did. Yeah. So. <clears throat> it's a shame, though, that Trojicon, rather than innovate, is deciding they're just going to sue Hollis. Yeah, exactly. Like, I get it. They're made in China. And in and, and modern speak, they're what would be considered online a Chad company. Like, boo, you know, like, but the reality of it is they're innovating, man. That, yeah. And that's what the optics industry really, really needs because you've got a few big players. You know, and Vortex has made their way up. Burris has made their way up over the years. Others have made their way up. But really, when immediately optics come up, what does everybody go to? RMR or EOTech. That's what everybody immediately tell you talks about. Well, we're still, they're still making the same stuff they started making in the 90s. There's no innovation. And now they're like, you guys made it for half the price of our base model RMR. And it's solar powered. Screw you. <laughs> We're suing you. Yes. Ah. Yeah. I, it seems that the market's telling you something. It would behoove them to, you know, listen. But anyhow, so we've gone about a minute over because we went on our That's little separate drives innovation. Right? Oh, it, it is. And if, if, Without the innovation, you stagnate and die, you know, and you can only count on your military and LE accounts for so long before, you know, because the military is looking. I know the U.S. military especially is, you know, the Army and the Marine Corps both uh, are both looking for new optics, you know, and then, and, you know, you've got the new contract with SIG and they're probably going to end up getting the optics contract for the, the Army in the long run, I'm willing to bet because they already make the 320 and now the machine guns and all the other stuff that they're trying to get made for the U.S. military in general. Talking about machine guns, did you see the new 240 that shoots 338 Lapua? Oh, I know. That thing is wicked. I'm just saying. I'm going <laughs> on one. One of these days I'm going on one. 338 Lapua. No big deal. It just shoots a mile. That's all. Right. <laughs> Could you imagine someone pulling a half cock <laughs> with a modern 240 in the 338? Just like taking their, oh, give me my M24 slash 110 slash M40. Isn't that what the jarhead still use? The M40, I think. Yeah. Whatever. Yep. And slap their optic on it like he did a 50 and fucking boom. <laughs> just one shot a dude. You you gotta wonder what was the niche niche for that? Like who needed to shoot that much that far? Right, exactly. I mean, everything I, must die. Everything <laughs> must die. Yeah, but that's everything what you over got. there. Yeah, that's has why to die. you got the AC one hundred and thirty. You just hey guys, <laughs> I got a fire that, mission for you. Yeah, that that I still. I still can remember TAC P's. Just, I I loved hanging out with them. They had the coolest job in the world. Call for fire all day long. Oh yeah, and Kaz from Air Force is the coolest thing ever. I mean, don't get me wrong, artillery and mortars are a thing to behold, but the stuff that them flyboys got. <laughs> that is kind of special like, right there. It really is. Watching J Dams get dropped and just watching. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> hey, look at me. I told you over the phone that was a bomb that hit that place. Oh, good Lord. Here we go. Now, that is what? for another episode there, conspiracy. <laughs> but I don't necessarily disagree. Uh, there's a lot more to the whole Beirut explosion than we're being told. But uh, Every single veteran in the world, that was not a firework factory. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Anyone who's ever been to war, oh, that's totally not a firework factory <laughs> at all. Hell, even the people who grew up in Beirut were like, yeah, that was no damn firework factory. Were you insane? And these people grew up in war. That's all Lebanon knows, yeah. especially Beirut. 
<clears throat> somebody's mask was off on a JDAM or something like, you know, <laughs> I know right? like, uh -oh, oh, no, <laughs> we just did an international incident. Just don't tell anyone. It'll be fine. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Hey, I've, I've seen a few of those things happen. <laughs> <laughs> and any every walk of life. <laughs> well, hey, gentlemen. I All gotta right. Go to the house. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and sign off. Junior uh, can be found at nagindustries.com. He is our California affiliate. He handles everything Ilio uh, optics wise for Vortex. Vortex. Optics. And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's it right now. I forgot. Sorry. I was I could have swore it was more than just Vortex and then I was like, oh wait, no, he got Oregon as well. That's what it is. You got yeah. the other state. We're, um, we're expanding our territory with Vortex. Um, there's a couple other optics companies that we don't necessarily have uh military contracts or not military, but law yeah. abilities, but uh we're just helping local law enforcement get what they need. Excellent. And uh, Armando, again, thank you for joining us tonight. It was very enlightening. It's always fun getting to talk to you. Uh, I know if we had our brothers outside of Junior, we'd probably be on here all night long. But uh, again, you can find Armando and uh, the Balsuto Academy of Defense and Gracie, North Carolina at Facebook at facebook.com backslash Gracie, North Carolina website uh, www.gracynorthcarolina.com and on instagram i'm going to say it again so when his wife listens to this later she'll be like you never get to talk to him again the sexy armando on instagram at our at armando underscore balsulto uh thank you for coming on thank you for the knowledge it's always Thanks fun having, having yes we greatly appreciate it <clears throat> well uh and that is it for us guys uh you know where to find galloway precision instagram facebook youtube you're here uh i didn't forget you exist gun snob you just came in at the very end of the show i can't help you with that time man time management come on <laughs> reminders were set I, but I, uh, I, 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 <laughs> thank, you. thank you all for joining us tonight we greatly appreciate it we wouldn't be here without our fans and hopefully a lot of uh, people will go over to armando and pick up some knowledge on rolling around socking people in the face and put the steel in them <laughs> and all right guys so with all that and that hey put the steel in them it's steel it works and with that we bid you adieu so be safe be accurate and god bless